Am I the butthole for not letting my mother-in-law host an online memorial service for my 26 female miscarriage? I recently miscarried at 12 weeks. The pregnancy was unplanned, but my husband and I were planning on keeping it, as we are both financially secure enough to have a child. My husband was disappointed, but my mother-in-law is devastated. She has been inconsolable and has called me multiple times crying. The issue is that I'm not upset about it at all. I really didn't have enough time to get attached to the idea of being pregnant, as I only knew for sure about three weeks before the miscarriage. I've listened to her whenever she needs, but she can't understand why I'm not as upset as she is. The last straw came when my husband casually brought up a Zoom call mother-in-law is organizing for the baby's memorial. We're still in lockdown so in person is out of the question thank God. She wants to invite a lot of their large, close-knit family. Hubby assumed that she talked to me about it, and phoned her to tell her she needed to take a step back. She blew up at him, called me cold and unfeeling, and asked what mother wouldn't mourn the loss of their child? In my eyes, I'm not a mother, and I don't have a child. I miscarried a blob of cells. To me it's the equivalent of crying over my period every month. I understand not everyone feels like this and I want to be sympathetic but a memorial is way beyond my comfort zone. I've refused to let it go ahead and she's been radio silent since. Husband is beyond stressed already from dealing with her and I think her grieving needs to take a back seat for a while. Am I the butthole? TLDR, mother-in-law wants to hold a memorial service for a pregnancy I wasn't attached to. Edit, since some people asked for info, mother-in-law had fertility issues. Husband is her only child and she dealt with a lot of early and late-term miscarriages. Not the butthole and your mother-in-law is weird. At 12 weeks, a lot of couples haven't even told family about the pregnancy yet, as miscarriages are so common in the first trimester. Plenty of women miscarry without ever knowing they were pregnant. Having a memorial service for a 12-week pregnancy is not a thing. I'm sorry you and your husband are having to deal with this. Glad you're doing okay. When slash if you get pregnant again, you might want to keep the information to yourselves until 16 weeks or so. Original poster replies. Yeah we stupidly let her know as soon as we did. She knew for about 3 weeks and had already started buying baby items. Lesson learned for sure. Not stupid, you had no way of knowing she would react like this. I think it really depends on the people and your relationship with them. You now know for the future how she'll react. My sister told me and our parents when she found out, but held off on telling the extended family or letting my mom tell other people, like people at church, for a while. She was okay with immediate family knowing because she said that if she did miscarry she'd want us to know that, but didn't want to tell everyone. Yeah my parents, best friend, and sister all knew around the time I did 6 weeks. Super early, but I knew they'd all be supportive if I had a miscarriage, and I'd want to share with them anyway. I didn't feel like keeping that to myself. My husband didn't want to tell his family until I was further around, which was just before we announced to everyone. That was probably around 14 to 16 weeks. My first pregnancy, I told everyone at around 10 to 12 weeks. Then, after my daughter was born, I had three early losses. My family was awful about all of them. If I ever managed to get pregnant, Again I intend to keep it secret right up until delivery if I can. I feel a little bad because while that is awful I did smile at the idea of you walking around carrying objects in front of you for a whole pregnancy like actresses do on TV when they're pregnant in real life and it's not part of the storyline. Luckily we live pretty far from most of my friends and family so I'll probably just rent a mascot suit to wear 24-7 anytime someone visits, smiley face. Oh this? It's the newest thing. I guess the new fashions haven't made it out to you all the way over there yet. Here in the fashion-forward world of rural Alabama, everyone wears squirrel suits in the spring. I'm so sorry, your family sounds awful. You are so not the butthole. She knows very well how this works. I have three living children but I've lost eight before birth, so I can see why she would mourn for the lost grandchild. But there comes a point where you know not every pregnancy results in a baby. She definitely should have been well past that point and known not to start buying stuff. I wouldn't have bought anything but the bare essentials at the last moment for my own recently born children had they not been multiples so there was a lot to potentially need. 
And even then when I had a few things and was told the triplet was going to die I beat myself up mentally for jinxing it by buying stuff assuming there would be a baby at the end of this and that was at 20 weeks. When I was pregnant, my then Phil never mentioned it at all, although he suddenly wanted to call and talk to me when before he had trouble remembering my name. Even the car seat I got for Christmas only had my Mills name on the card. I found out later that when they were living in a remote village in Alaska, they ordered baby stuff through the mail, lost their daughter at birth, and then had all the baby gear came after the funeral. Crafty timing, now father-in-law never mentions a pregnancy for fear of jinxing it. Oh, my goodness that's a horrible situation to have been in. Yes, I really felt for them. It must have been beyond hideous to have to send stuff back or find new homes for it. They were teachers and all their family was in Texas, so no family to help. It left a mark, even 30 years after. Your father-in-law sounds like a very sweet man. He was one of those grouchy on the outside to protect his soft squishy heart types. We finally figured out this was his way of showing he was excited about the baby, first granddaughter, without actually coming out and acknowledging the pregnancy. Once she was born, you almost couldn't pry her out of his arms. He was one of those grouchy on the outside to protect his soft squishy heart types. My favorite staff member from the boarding school I went to was like that. Pretty much everyone feared him but I knew he was all just gruff talk. He sadly passed away last year. R.I.P. Norm, you salty sweetheart. That's awful. I remember my mom being pregnant when I was around 8 yo and she had started buying things for the baby. It's very patchy but next thing I remember is being at the hospital and waiting in the canteen with my dad and my mom coming in after her appointment crying and saying something was missing. I then remember staying at a friend's for two nights in a row which was very unusual. After that my mom spent a lot of time in bed crying. It was an awful time and something we have never talked about, I don't think she'd have the strength to talk to me about it now even though it was over 25 years ago. Miscarriage is so personal and affects everyone differently. Some people want to share their stories and others want to keep it buried inside. Whatever helps you get through it? My culture doesn't even set up a nursery until the child comes for this very reason. Same, and it's actually really inconvenient. I understand this pain. We got to 9 weeks, I ordered the t-shirt I was going to wear for my pregnancy announcement, and 4 days later, we found out we had lost the baby. Totally forgot about the t-shirt until it arrived in the mail and it ripped the wound right back open. I'm very sad that I'll never be able to truly enjoy a pregnancy, mine or anyone else's, out of pure fear, but it is what it is. I once sent a congratulations on your pregnancy card to a friend. Who miscarried the day before the card arrived? Fortunately, my friend appreciated the gesture, and explained that she had almost nothing to remember the pregnancy by, and she saved the card in a little memory box but I still felt bad. No more cards, that's for sure. And while I'll start knitting a baby blanket the moment someone tells me they are pregnant, I do not mention it until I am giving it to the baby after it is born. I read a horrifying story by a woman who had a stillbirth. The genius of the modern search engine algorithm knew she'd been due but couldn't figure out that the sudden flurry of panic searches for things like what if the baby stops moving meant that the pregnancy did not go to plan. She got online and was flooded with ads for baby clothes and supplies. For months. For how common it is for pregnancies not to end well, it's amazing how bad we are at accounting for that. It's the same with living children really. The fear that something might happen to them or they'll do something dangerous. I'm so sorry. I miscarried my second pregnancy. I know it's not the same as losing a child that's stillborn, I still think of it when Christmas rolls around. I miscarried one week before, and wonder what if. It all worked out for the best, though. I'm like this with pregnancies. It's Jewish superstition to not celebrate a baby until it's born, and while I'll acknowledge a pregnancy, some believe it's horribly bad luck to even comment that a woman is pregnant, I follow the lead of the mother because I don't want to overstep. Once the baby comes, I'm there with presents and support to celebrate, but I've had too many friends lose babies before they're born to get too celebratory too soon. I think that it's okay to celebrate with friends good news with them without worrying about bad things taking it away, obviously you are respecting cultural traditions as well here, I'm only speaking to the not wanting to cause more pain by celebrating too soon part of this string of comments. It hurts no matter what when you lose a pregnancy or baby. 
It's at least nice to know that your baby was loved and cared about by your family and friends too. I think celebrating is appropriate for the good news, and sharing their heartache for their loss is appropriate if the worst happens. Holding back joy at the good things in life doesn't make the bad things hurt any less. The key here is matching their level of joy or sadness and sharing their emotions with them. Not making your emotions disproportionate or more important than theirs like original posters mill. Traditionally, Ashkenazi Jews don't have baby showers before the baby is born, they have something roughly equivalent right after. It's not religious law, just custom. These days, most progressive sect Jews have assimilated and have switched to baby showers, but my parents' generation was a mix. My mom wasn't born Jewish, so she wanted a baby shower. My dad's mom, Jewish grandma, apparently paced and looked nervous the whole time. I'm born just fine and so are three siblings and five cousins follow. Decades fly by, and now it's time for the first baby shower amongst the grandchildren, mine. My Jewish grandmother pulled me aside to tell me she was so happy, that she'd been a nervous wreck at my mother's shower but now with hindsight she could relax and enjoy mine. Oh my goodness this. My family had always said that it is bad luck to buy anything in the first trimester. We always wait until after the 18 to 20 week ultrasound just to be safe and even then it is just cutsy stuff until they hit viability at 26 weeks. The entire woman in my family have fertility issues, one of my aunts even had a late term miscarriage at 24 weeks so we take no chances. Not the butthole op and your mother-in-law needs some mental health from a professional, her reaction makes me think that she possibly never got over her own losses and is projecting onto you. I'm sorry you've had to go through so much heartache, disappointed face. I remember being furious when my mother-in-law bought my baby's Christmas present when I was only 8 weeks pregnant. It might seem silly, but I was so afraid she'd jinxed. Thankfully, our daughter was fine but I think I might put a buying rule on things in the future. That's exactly why she's so upset. She had already become so invested in the outcome that she's disappointed. Your expectations were grounded in reality and hers were beyond hopes and dreams. I mean, for F's sake. She was already buying stuff? What did she expect to happen? Edited to add, it's been brought to my attention that this comment could be read a certain way that was not my intention. You can see my additional comments and replies for more clarification. Should. Should she have expected a miscarriage? One fifth known pregnancies end with a miscarriage, but that means roughly four out of five don't. She was happy and excited, how can you fault her for that? Memorial thing is strange, if the parents wanted one presumably they'd be hosting it, so it's very much overstepping in my eyes for her to even host one without being invited to, but the buying baby things isn't that strange to me. Oh, no. Absolutely not. I was more thinking. How much was she going to accumulate? At what point was she going to give it to Op? How much did she buy without finding out whether it was Op style? I can see what you mean though. Mostly my thought process was why would you buy these items to keep for literally 7 months unused. I'd probably buy a onesie and one soft comfort toy slash plush out of excitement. Not a pile of items before mama is even showing or doing the nursery. Only a small portion of my train of thought was the idea of compounding the loss. Buying a onesie or two you might even keep as a memorial forever. But having to give away an entire wardrobe, curated with hopes, is immeasurably more heart-wrenching in terms of the material aspect. For each one of those items that mother-in-law intentionally picked out, knowing they won't go used rips the heart again. Not that she was, or should have, worried at the time. If anything, my takeaway is just empathy with mother-in-law for hyping herself up so much that the sadness was that much more felt. I truly feel for her. But when you're buying items months in advance, when even the expecting couple themselves is not shopping, you should be able to see that your excitement is more than theirs is. We should not expect others to show the same grief that we experience either. Okay, that makes so much more sense than what I thought you were saying. I think some people can't help themselves, they hear about a pregnancy and get their hopes up. Definitely. And I think it depends on your family too. My family is really practical. For example, my mother would absolutely just buy a couple of items. She would limit herself because of the what-if question. It's normal for us to talk like that about all sorts of events slash situations slash outcomes. The edit says mother-in-law had fertility issues and had unfortunately many miscarriages both early and late. She of all people knows miscarriages can happen, 
So why would she buy stuff so early? Why is she making Ops miscarriage about her? She should be supporting original poster in any way she needs because she's been there. I had a miscarriage at 10 weeks. Years later, a friend mine had one. I took her flowers and we chatted for a few minutes and then I left. I supported her how she needed. Edit, mother-in-law needs to read the ring theory where you dump out not in. Web link. This, this, this. It is not appropriate for mother-in-law to grieve at the actual person who had the miscarriage. That's what Mill's friends and spouse are for. Not the butthole I was going for not the butthole until she insulted you for not grieving, as she wants you to. Original poster replies. Yeah that conversation was beyond rude, I don't think she knows I heard it though. Look up the circle of grief that will help out into perspective how badly she is behaving. Maybe it'll help to talk to mother-in-law about how to be more sensitive and less selfish. Here it is. Web link. I unblocked ads and it's still telling me to unblock ads so I can't read this. Draw a circle. This is the center ring. In it put the name of the person at the center of the current trauma. For Katie's aneurysm, that's Katie. Now draw a larger circle around the first one. In that ring put the name of the person next closest to the trauma. In the case of Katie's aneurysm, that was Katie's husband, Pat. Repeat the process as many times as you need to. In each larger ring put the next closest people. Parents and children before more distant relatives. Intimate friends in smaller rings, less intimate friends in larger ones. When you are done, you have a fetching order. One of Susan's patients found it useful to tape it to her refrigerator. Here are the rules. The person in the center ring can say anything she wants to anyone, anywhere. She can fetch and complain and whine and moan and curse the heavens and say, life is unfair and why me? That's the one payoff for being in the center ring. Everyone else can say those things too, but only to people in larger rings. When you are talking to a person in a ring smaller than yours, someone closer to the center of the crisis, the goal is to help. Listening is often more helpful than talking. But if you're going to open your mouth, ask yourself if what you are about to say is likely to provide comfort and support. If it isn't, don't say it. Don't, for example, give advice. People who are suffering from trauma don't need advice. They need comfort and support. So say, I'm sorry or this must really be hard for you or can I bring you a pot roast? Don't say, you should hear what happened to me or here's what I would do if I were you. And don't say, this is really bringing me down. If you want to scream, cry, or complain, if you want to tell someone how shocked you are or how icky you feel, or whine about how it reminds you of all the terrible things that have happened to you lately, that's fine. It's a perfectly normal response. Just do it to someone in a bigger ring. Comfort in, dump out. I think this is the most essential part. Thank you. I already knew this but the circle is a very good way of visualizing the concept. Thanks. This needs to be known. Makes it much easier to deal with tough situations. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.